TV magazine Australia just reported on the, the top 15 countries in the world for actual solar energy. This is a fascinating list and it shows you just exactly how many solar panels there are in the top 15 highest solar producing countries around the world. The list is really not what I thought it would be. Hello my friends and welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans and I'm coming to you from Melbourne in Australia. This is the kind of information which fascinates me. Solar energy has been deployed at an incredibly rapid rate in many countries around the world. And interestingly, the country that's in first place is in first place by such a big margin that they're actually producing more than three times as much solar as the country in second place. That really surprised me. But it also shows you just how far to come some countries still have. Some countries with billions of people, or at least more than a billion people, really have a long way to go. Solar is said to be the number one technology deployed across the globe for energy production, increasing the world's installed capacity by 75% through 2027, adding 2,400 gigawatts over the period, said the International Energy Agency or the IEA. Now, the funny thing is about this stuff, the IEA's predictions are always lowball. They lowball their predictions every single time. Maybe not every single time, but I'm talking like 99 times out of 100, they'll give you pessimistic predictions, which are always blown out of the water. So that's the cool thing. 75% increase is probably going to be closer to 150% increase. At least that's what I think anyhow. The IEA report said that renewable energy expansion is 90% of the planned additions worldwide, and solar accounts for over 60% of all forecast renewable energy capacity expansion, setting records for annual additions every year through 2027. Cumulative PV capacity nearly triples in the IEA forecast, growing by almost 1,500 gigawatts and exceeding natural gas by 2026 and coal by 2027. Here in Australia, all coal power plants will be shut down by 2035. We used to be the country in the world that depended on coal more than any other country in the world. That's rapidly changing. Same thing is happening in Germany and actually in many other countries. Cost declines and the desire to boost national energy security and climate resilience are driving widespread adoption of renewables and solar. In the United States, the cost of utility scale PV fixed tilt was $7 per watt. That's US $4.75 per watt in 2010. It declined to $1.40 per watt or US 94 cents per watt by 2020. So you're looking at $4.75 in 2010 down to 94 cents by 2020. Ah. Uh, that's enormous. That is that is something the media isn't talking about, and they absolutely should be. That cost decline is absolutely staggering. I mean, if that happened again, we'd be looking at solar for 20 cents per watt in 10 years' time. And will that happen? No, I don't think so. But will it be cheaper than what it is today? Absolutely. There's going to be cost fluctuations up and down, but the media is only going to tell you they're only ever going to tell you when solar is more expensive, not when it's cheaper, and it will be cheaper in the long run. The world will need 5.2 terawatts of solar power generation capacity by 2030 and 14 terawatts by mid-century to be able to limit global average temperature rises this century to 1.5 degrees Celsius, said the International Renewable Energy Agency. Here are the 15 biggest solar producing countries in the world from BP Statistical Review of World Energy. Number 15, Ukraine with 8 gigawatts. Number 14, Brazil with 13 gigawatts. Spain is in 13th with 13.7 gigawatts. Now, Spain is an extremely sunny country. I think they can ramp these numbers up a fair bit. If you consider the fact that United Kingdom gets less than half the sun that Spain does, and they're actually ahead of them, you can see my point. United Kingdom was in 12th place with 13.7 gigawatts. Netherlands, 11th with 14.25 gigawatt. France, in 10th with 14.7 gigawatt. But the, remember, France actually just signed into law a new rule, which is that all parking garages over the entire country must have solar on them. That's a rule that will be changing over time. So today, if you build a new parking garage, you got to put solar on top of it. Existing garages don't have to have solar put on top of them, but they will within the next few years. Vietnam was in ninth place with 16.7 gigawatts. Obviously, a lot of sun in Vietnam. South Korea was surprisingly in eighth place with 18.2 gigawatts. Australia was in seventh with 19.1 gigawatts. We do have a country here of population of only 25 million, so by far the smallest population of any of the countries in this list. Sixth place was Italy with 22.7 gigawatts. Fifth was India with 49.3 gigawatts, which is a a good number, but remember, India is one of the sunniest places on the world. It's a big country and there's 1.4 billion people there. They've got a lot of room to grow. Germany, fourth, with incredible 58.6 gigawatts. Now, important on the fact, Germany 
has now hit almost 50% renewable energy generation this year. That's a new record. Meaning, likely by 2030, they'll hit around 85%. 85% of all energy produced in Germany, from my tables, my data that I'm looking at, says it will be renewable energy. That's an amazing number. Third place, Japan. That's an impressive position for Japan with 74.2 gigawatts. Now imagine if the Japanese embraced EVs. You can probably power most of them with their solar. Second place was the United States with 93.7 gigawatts. And in first was China with 316.4 gigawatts. So that means China had nearly as much solar installed as 15th to third place in this list. So if we add up third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirty, forty, fifth, you get the point. All the way to fifteenth, all those countries combine them all together. China had nearly as much solar as all those countries put together. It's a pretty impressive result, especially considering quite a few parts of China are not all that sunny. For example, had the climate of India in China, solar would be even more efficient and even more effective and even more cost effective. However, the world will have to install an additional 450 gigawatts of new solar capacity each year, most of it utility scale for the rest of this decade, with China and India to lead Asia to a roughly half share of the world's installed PV capacity in 2030, estimated Irena's World Energy Transitions Outlook report. Elsewhere, North America will need to install 90 gigawatts per year of solar to claim a 14% share of the world's operating panels at the end of the decade, and Europe's 19% slice of the pie will require 55 gigawatts of annual solar capacity capacity additions. The world will have to start devoting $8 trillion per year to the energy transition for the rest of the decade to reach those targets, said Irina. That can be feasible if the $103.3 trillion per year channeled into fossil fuels is immediately diverted to the transition, the publication stated. Public investment in the transition will have to immediately double too, said Irina, to attract the remaining money needed from the private sector, which would bear most of the financial burden. Irina said policymakers need to usher in sufficient international grid connections and flexibility training, utility scale batteries, electricity demand side management, digital tools, peer-to-peer -to -peer power trading, community ownership of renewables, time of use energy tariffs, and net billing systems. Now, whether or not this can actually happen, I don't know, but I'm confident that eventually it will happen. It may take five years longer. It's very possible, but we definitely will get there. That's the news that I take away from this. Solar has come down in price so much, it's now the cheapest form of energy anywhere in the world. Yes, we do need to store some of it, not all of it. Keep that in mind. We only need about four hours of energy storage to make the whole thing work with solar and wind. And remember, the cost of batteries, in particular lithium ion phosphate batteries, have come down enormously over the past decade as well. If we add to that the reality that the world's two biggest battery companies, BYD and CATL, are now focusing their efforts on sodium batteries and therefore reducing the cost of energy storage significantly, I really think this could happen. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.